Goes my mind every time I think about how I did you wrong. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Welcome to this Mental House of Sports edition. Huh? How y'all doing out there? Whatever side of the diaspora that you are on. I would like to welcome you to this sports channel and where we can talk a little, 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 little bit sports because I do know a little, little about sports. I do know a little bit. Okay. So, um, but this video is not going to be uh, what I know about. This, this, this is going to be a call out to my main man. Um, I haven't seen him in a while. Anybody that know him, give him a shout out. Uh, tell him that Khadija is looking for him. He would know exactly who that is. Um, I, I put a, a um, APB out, and so far I haven't gotten any contact in anything just yet. But my prayers is with him and his family. Uh, his children, and, um, you know, just whoever. I haven't talked to him in such a long time. And that is none other than to uh, who I feel is one of the most underrated, um, forgotten pugilists, a middleweight contender in the 80s. And his name, it was a Southpaw. Woo. And his name was Don Lee. How many of y'all know Don Lee? How many of y'all heard of Don Lee? Um, there's a few uh his matches going on and that's that's on the uh internet. But he's the only fighter that I know that I had Marvin Hagler ducking him for sure. Marvin Hagler wanted no part, the late great Marvin Hagler, I should say. He wanted no parts of um uh, of Donald Vincent Lee. So let me let me uh just give y'all a footnote of who I'm talking about because this is one of my most beloved fighters, my beloved uh, friend, and um and like I said, it's been over 10, 15 years since I, it's been over 20 years since I saw Don, now that I think about it. And um, I just wish him well. Let me give you a little footnote. You know, he, he was a contender in the 80s, and he stood out with his height. First of all, he was six feet two, and he had a reach of 78 inches as one of the tallest middleweights of that time. Michael Nunn was around the same height a little later. On top of that, he could hit and box well enough, especially considering his height and uh, size. However, he turned out to be not good enough to really succeed and win a world title or even fight for one. His fighting... Elias was dangerous. So we used to call he used to call him dangerous Don Lee. And it was it sure was dangerous to take him lightly. He was also unlucky a couple of times because he was stopped on cuts in two of his important fights. His greatest victory came uh when he knocked out Tony Simpson. And I don't know how y'all remember uh he was a <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> he was a Brit, wasn't he? Tony Simpson. I remember we all got around, gathered around. I think he was on Wild World of Sports. Uh, but my cousin went over with him. But I believe this was in England. And my uh, uncle and my cousin uh, was in attendance at this fight. Anyway, his greatest victory was knocking out Tony Simpson in eight rounds in 1984. Lee was interesting because he 
only fought as a pro in the 80s between 81 and 89. Unfortunately, in the middle of his career, he also had a brush with the law and was arrested in 1985 for several charges. Among them was a possession of a stolen gun. Hence, his mother gained his moniker came another meeting. And this is the story of Dangerous Don Lee. Now, this article I pulled up was written by a dude named Balls the Madman, so I want to thank you for this article. Not too many people remember Don. He's a afterthought. He's just... But I want y'all to know that those of y'all who appreciate the, the art form of boxing, he was one of the best. He was born Donald Vincent Lee on October... 2nd, 1960 in Gary, Indiana, the murder capital of the USA in the 70s. He later moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, before or after becoming a pro boxer. As an amateur, he won the 1981 Golden Gloves and finished with a record of 196 and 6. Y'all hear me? 196 and 6. He wasn't no joke. He had his first pro fight June 13th, the same year, and beat Billy Evans by a first-round knockout. He went 13-0 with all knockouts before surprisingly losing by a technical knockout to Art McLeod December 15th, 1982, in Chicago. He then rebounded by scoring two more knockouts before drawing up against a guy named Guy Kennedy, after four more knockout victories, yeah, he drawed against Kennedy. That's right. Okay, after four more knockout victories, he was matched against the vastly more experienced Englishman, Tony Simpson, which they thought would just be a card filler. They really didn't expect. Uh, <laughs> they didn't expect what happened to Tony Simpson happen. Uh, who? Because Tony D at that point had a forty-nine four and one record. Um, Simpson was, however, only two and a half years older, and at five eight, he was six inches shorter. But he did well against the much taller opponents. Usually, the fight was at the Sands Hotel. Um, in Casino in Atlanta City. So I made a mistake. I, uh, that's not where, they, uh, where he fought Simpson at. Okay, the fight was at um, Hotel in hotel Casino in Atlanta City. January 15, 1984. Simpson started out aggressively and sent Lee down in the last second of the first round. However, in the third Lee sent Simpson down with a flush left hook and then put him down twice more in that round. Here, um, there, there was no three down knockdown rule. So otherwise, the fighter would uh, end right there. Simpson came back in the fight. And then in the eighth, he put Lee down for a flash knockdown. It was a real good fight. I'm trying to think, who the hell am I thinking about that they went to England that he fought? Anyway, after Lee rose, he was sent reeling by Simpson's assault. Then, by the end, as Simpson went charging at him, he caught him with another flush straight left, which put Simpson down and out. That was a major victory for Lee because Simpson had fought Marvin Hagler for the world title the previous year and was the European champion more than once. On March 8th, the next year, he fought Doug DeWitt, but the fight ended in a draw after nearly 10 rounds.
Ooh. After scoring three more knockouts, he was matched against a major new contender on the rise called uh, Michael Elijade. Y'all remember Michael Elijade? The fight was again at the Sands Hotel, February of 1987. And early on, Lee had some success wobbling Elijah Day with a left hook, but was then put down in the fifth round and then round nine as he was hit with two consecutive right hands and knocked out badly. Elijah Day went on to fight for the IBF title against Frank Tate that fall. For Lee, that loss marked the beginning of the end of his success. After winning two fights on points, he went to England to fight Michael Watson. Okay, that's who it was. Back then, an unknown who soon thereafter would show himself to be a serious contender. The fight was on February 3rd, 1988 at Wembley, and Lee got unlucky and suffered a cut in his mouth. And the fight had to be stopped after five rounds. After that, I remember he had that big old cut too on the side of his mouth. After that, he jumped into the light weight, light heavyweight division and fought another young hot contender, Jeff Hitman Harding. Hitman Harding. The fight was in Sydney, Australia. And once again, Lee had to retire because of a cut. Had to retire because of a cut or several cuts after being behind 78 uh, to 78 uh, up to 74 on points. He then decided that 175 wasn't suited for him and he went down to 168 pounds, which was still a relatively new division with a few big names. He did well uh, um, at, right there at first but only against no hopers, uh, scoring three knockouts first, and then had his second best win against the slick Sanderline Williams in a fight uh, for the NABF title. It was on uh, April 14, 1989, when Don Lee managed to win his only belt by outpointing Williams. Uh, with side scores after 12 rounds, despite getting cut early on. And that's when we found out that he had a tissue paper skin, pretty much. The title had been vacated by Tommy Hearns, who was Lee's sparring partner. Okay? And then it went all downhill as he was disqualified in his very first defense against Paul Whitaker. Only two months later, June 19th, he was still, uh, you know, I mean, it, well, it was still a very eventful fight, and Lee was down twice before knocking Whitaker down four times. But he hit him every time he was down, which brought forth a disqualification. And that, and that happened at the end in the sixth round. He had his last fight on 13 of November that year and won by unanimous decision in 10 against a fighter by the name of Keith Murray. He also a left boxing career with a record of 32 wins, 27 by knockouts, 5 losses, and 2 draws. Don Lee was definitely a capable fighter because of his physical attributes, and he was hard to fight for most middleweights of that time who were shorter and had a smaller reach. But with his power, he was also a rather dangerous opponent. However, like many other big men and punchers, he probably thought he was indestructible and then found out that he wasn't. Guys who got into wars and exchanges always lived more dangerously than those who had a more technical and cautious approach. 
But that is why everyone loves watching um, the first kind and not the second. There isn't much info on him otherwise, and there is no info about his current whereabouts. He was one of those fighters that came and fought and went, and then after retirement completely vanished out of sight. His trouble with the law might have been another reason why he retired so soon, but he had already lost too many important fights um, and had entered a division that was just starting to shape up. Thanks to the presence, albeit a short one, of guys like Thomas Hearns and um, Sugar Ray Leonard. Whatever the truth be there, one thing is certain. Don Lee. Don Vincent Lee out of Gary, Indiana, was and is a forgotten warrior. I really appreciate this article. Um, I really appreciate it because a lot of people don't even know who this great fighter was. Um, and he was from the heart of the Midwest. And we love this guy. Um, I I miss Don very much, and at this point, you know I don't know. The last time I talked to him, he was a little punchy, and I don't know if uh, he's dead or alive. To tell you the truth, but God bless him wherever he is, if he's still alive, and if he's not, may he rest in peace. But he was one of the one of the he was one of the, 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 the tough, tougher opponents in that middleweight division coming up in the 80s. Dangerous Don Lee. Southpaw. Look him up. Look at some of his fights. So with that being said, um, if y'all remember Dangerous Don, put a comment in the comment section. Let me know if you remember him. Do you remember how good he was? And who do you think would have won between him and Marvin Hagler? What, what do you think? Because that, that was the bout that never came. It was never made. All right. I look forward to your comments, and I'm going to see you in the next video.